the question is a flat plate of area 1.5 into 10 raised to 6 mm square is pulled with a speed of 0.4 meter per second to another plate located at a distance of 0.15 mm apart from it find the force and power required to maintain the speed keep the fluid separating them having viscosity as 1 pascal second this is the question so let's try to see so there is one flat plate of area 1.5 into 10 raised to 6 mm square so you can consider this is your uh, flat plate and this plate has area 1.5 into 10 raised to 6 mm square let's try to convert this into meter square so we know that 1 mm that is nothing but 10 raised to minus 3 meter okay so 1 mm square that is nothing but 10 raised to minus 6 meter square so i'll put this values so finally my area is 1.5 into 10 raised to 6 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter square so ultimately the area is 1.5 meter square and this plate is pulled with a speed of uh, with the speed of 0.4 meter per second related to the another plate so oh, that's one more plate located at a distance of 0.15 mm apart from it so the distance between these two plate is 0.15 mm so that is nothing but our dy so dy is 0.15 mm so that is nothing but 0.15 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter always we are considering si units and the next question is find the force and power required to maintain the speed so we have to find out to pull this plate how much force is required how much force and how much power is required whatever the fluid in between these two plates is there the fluid is having viscosity of 1 pascal second let's use newton's law of viscosity so as per the newton's law of viscosity tau that is equal to mu du by d bar so tau is nothing but shear stress so shear stress we can find out as force upon area then uh, dynamic viscosity as it is change in velocity we know that this bottom plate is stationary and this top plate is moving with this velocity 0.4 meter per second so we can consider this velocity as u2 and this velocity as u1 which is zero because this plate is stationary so difference between these two velocities that is du is 0.4 meter per second only now let's put the values so force we don't know what is the value of force area is uh, 1.5 meter square 1.5 meter square dynamic viscosity it is given as one pascal second that is nothing but one newton second per meter square so that is in si units only so we'll keep as it is so it is one difference between the velocities is 0.4 and the distance dy is 0.15 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter okay so let's calculate this now if i put these values in the calculator then i'm getting the value as 4000 newton 4000 newton so this is my uh, first thing that i have to find out that is the force required to move that plate with velocity 0.4 meter per second now let's try to find out second thing that is how much power is required so we know that power that is nothing but force into the velocity so force into velocity or change in velocity we can say so that is equal to 4000 into velocity is uh, 0.4 so ultimately it is 1600 watt so this is my second answer so the question is the dynamic viscosity of an oil used for lubrication between a shaft and sleeve is six points and the shaft is of diameter 0.4 meter and rotates at 190 rpm calculate the power lost in the bearing for the sleeve a length of 90 mm the thickness of the film is 1.5 mm so this is the shaft and you can see the sleeve also the dimensions are given like shaft diameter is 0.4 mm and the sleeve length is 90 mm and the gap between the shaft and sleeve that is given as 1.5 mm and we have to find out what is the power lost so that is our question so see uh, how to solve the numerical first try to see what we want to find out we want to find out power what is the formula for power it is 2 pi nt by 60 so we have and we have these values we don't have this t so what do you mean by this t this t is torque so torque that is nothing but force into radius force into radius that is nothing but torque so radius we have uh, we we want this force only 
So how to find out this force? This force we can find out by using Newton's law of viscosity. That is nothing but tau that is equal to force upon area and that is also equal to mu du by dy. So by using this, we will get this force value. By using this force value, we are able to find out torque and by using the torque, we can find out the power. Okay. So this is how we are going to solve this numerical. So let's start. So first I will write the given things. So uh, viscosity of this lubricating oil is given that is 6 poise. I will convert that into our SI unit that is 0 0.6 Newton second per meter square. And the diameter is given diameter of the shaft is 0.4 meter. And its speed is 190 rpm. Sleeve length is given that is 90 mm. So 90 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter. And the thickness that we are indicating by a symbol dy, so that is given as 1.5 mm. So 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter. Always we are writing in terms of SI units. So let's find out the uh, force. So by using Newton's law of viscosity, we can write it like this. Shear stress tau that is equal to mu du by dy. Or that is also equal to force upon area that is equal to mu du by dy. Now we'll try to put the values. So force we don't know. Now how to calculate the area? See this area is circumference area. Okay. So circumference area is just like this. So this is your shaft and uh, the sleeve length. Okay. That is 90 mm. So this circumference area we want. So that area we can find out as pi dl. So I'll put the values. So pi diameter is 0.4 and length is 90 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter okay so this area is 0 0.1131 meter square so we got this area at 0 0.1131 meter square dynamic viscosity that is 0 0.6 then uh, change in velocity actually we want this change in velocity as linear velocity so in order to find out the uh, linear velocity we can say it is pi d and divided by 60. Remember this u means velocity and mu that is dynamic viscosity. Okay, don't confuse between the notations. So pi d n by 60 is linear velocity. So you just put the values. So pi diameter is 0 0.4. Speed is 190 rpm divided by 60. Okay, so we are getting this velocity as 3.9794 meter per second. So I'll put that value. So it is 3.9794. That is du. And dy is 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter. So ultimately we are getting the force as uh, this force value is uh, around 180.028 Newton. Okay, this is the value of the force. So once we got this force value, that is 180.028 Newton. It is very easy to find out the torque. So torque is force into the radius. That is nothing but F into D by 2. So force is 180.028. Diameter is 0 0.4 divided by 2. So torque we are getting as 36.006 Newton meter. Around this we are getting the torque. So let's find out power lost. So how much power loss is there in this uh, lubricating oil that we want to find out. So it is 2 pi and t divided by 60. So let's put the values 2 into pi. Speed is given as 190. Torque is 36.006 divided by 60. So power loss we are getting as 716.395 by. Always use SI units. So it is very easy to write final unit. So this is our final answer. Question is, if the velocity profile over a flat plate is parabolic with a vertex 20 cm from the plate, where the velocity is 120 cm per second, calculate the velocity gradient, shear stress at a distance of 0, 10 and 20 cm from the plate. Take the viscosity of oil as 8.5 volts. So this is the question. Try to understand it. So uh, the question is like this, one flat plate is there.
one flat plate is there and on which the fluid is flowing and let us consider at this section i want to plot the velocity profile so the velocity profile is just like this so at this point the velocity is less at this point it is little bit more and it is little bit more it is little bit more like this and this velocity profile is parabolic this velocity profile is parabolic and equation of this velocity profile is not given so we have to find out this equation of velocity then we have to find out the velocity gradient and shear stress at different distances from the plate so let's solve it so we know the equation of parabola so let us consider uh, the velocity profile equation is like this it is ax square sorry ay square plus by plus c we have to find out this coefficients a b c for that we need some boundary conditions so let us consider the boundary conditions are like this uh, so at at y is equal to 0 the velocity is 0 this is because of no slip condition no slip condition because of no slip condition at this point when y is equal to 0 the velocity will be 0 this is one condition second condition which is given that is at y is equal to 20 centimeter the velocity is 120 centimeter per second this is given and third condition is like this at y is equal to 20 centimeter du by dy is 0 this is because at the top of this plate there is no resistance on the upper side okay and the velocity is maximum and we know the maximum minimum principle that's why we can write du by dy that is equal to zero okay so we'll use these three conditions and we'll try to find out this velocity equation so i'm putting the first boundary condition so at y is equal to zero u is equal to zero so u i'm putting this boundary condition in this equation a y square plus b y plus c so u is zero then y is zero So by using this equation, we are getting that c is equal to zero. Okay. So one uh, uh, constant we got that is c that is equal to zero. Now we try to put the second boundary condition in this equation that is u is equal to a y square plus b y plus c. Okay. So u is 120 120 centimeter per second. That is equal to a into y is 20 20 square plus b into 20. And from this first equation, we know that c is equal to 0, so we are not going to put c, okay, because c is equal to 0, or we can write like this, plus 0. So ultimately, this equation is 120, that is equal to 20 square, that is 400, so it is 400a plus 20b. So this is my equation number 1. Now I am putting the third boundary condition, like this. Mm, so our equation is u is equal to a y square plus b y plus c so uh, we have to differentiate this with respect to y so du by dy is a 2 a y plus b so as per the third boundary condition du by dy is 0 at y is equal to 20 centimeter so 2 as it is a as it is y is 20 centimeter plus b so ultimately this equation is 0 that is equal to 20 into 2 that is 40a plus b this is my second equation so we'll try to solve these two equations equation number 1 and 2 in order to get the coefficients a and b see already we got c uh, is 0 so we'll try to find out a and b so i am going to multiply this equation number 2 uh, by 10 so equation number 2 will be like this 0 that is equal to 400a plus 10b so this is my equation number 3 so i'm going to solve this equation number 1 and 3 so i'm going to subtract equation number 3 from equation number 1 so it is like this so 120 minus 0 is 120 400 400 this will be cancelled and 20 uh, minus 10 that is equal to 10b okay so by using this i'm getting b as 120 divided by 10 that is equal to 12 
So by using this, uh, uh, we can put this value of B in any of this equation, like equation number one or equation number two or equation number three. I'm putting that in equation number two. So my equation is like this: zero that is equal to 40a plus 12. Right? That is my equation. So I'll try to solve this and try to find out the value of a. So 40a that is equal to minus 12. So a is minus 12 by 40. That is equal to minus 0.3. So I'm getting the value of a as 0.3. The value of b as 12, and value of c as 0. So finally, my equation of velocity is like this: u is equal to minus 0.3 y square plus 12y plus c. That is equal to 0. Okay. So this is my equation of the velocity. in other numericals you may get directly the equation of velocity profile okay and by using that you can solve the further numerical okay so this is our equation of velocity profile and we have to find out velocity gradient we have to find out velocity gradient so velocity gradient that is nothing but du by dy so i will differentiate this equation of velocity with respect to y so that equation is du by dy that is equal to minus 0.6y plus 2 This is uh, the equation for the velocity gradient, and we have to find out velocity gradient at y is equal to zero. So I'm putting first y is equal to zero. So I'm getting the value as twelve. Then uh, y is equal to d u d y at y is equal to ten. Sorry, ten. So that is minus zero point six. Into ten plus twelve, so this value I'm getting as six. Then du by dy at y is equal to twenty. So again zero point six twenty plus twelve. So again it is zero. So these are my value of uh, velocity gradients. At different location, that is at y is equal to zero centimeter, at y is equal to ten centimeter, and at y is equal to twenty centimeter. So let's try to find out the shear stresses. So we know that shear stress that is nothing but mu into du by dy, and we want to find out shear stress at y is equal to zero. So for that, we should know what is du by dy at y is equal to zero. Just put these values. So shear stress at y is equal to zero is viscosity is given as 8.5 points. So in SI units that is 0.85, and du by dy at y is equal to zero we are getting as 12. So ultimately this value is 10.2 newton per meter square. This is the shear stress at y is equal to zero. Similarly we have to find out the shear stress at y is equal to 10 centimeter and at y is equal to 20 centimeter. So let's do this. So shear stress at y is equal to 10. That is equal to mu du by dy at y is equal to 10. So putting the values, 0.85 du by dy is 6. So this one is 5.1 newton per meter square. So that is shear stress at y is equal to 10. Similarly, shear stress at y is equal to 20. That is mu du by dy. At y is equal to 20. That is 0.85 into 0. So shear stress at y is equal to 20 is 0. We can observe here that where the velocity is maximum at that point, shear stress is minimum. That is nearly zero.